As most of you probably know, I'm a big believer in the protection that a table saw blade guard can provide. I made a whole video about exactly why you should be using one for every cut that you can. I'll link to that video below this one. Do yourself a favor and watch it. Your fingers will thank me later. But I also am realistic. I understand that some saws just don't have blade guards because they were long ago removed and discarded and nobody knows where they are. And other saws, particularly cheap portable versions, have what could best be called blade guard shaped objects because they're just pieces of sheet metal and plastic that merely masquerade as effective blade guards. But in reality, they can be flimsy and impossible to align with your table saw blade and so they can become hazards themselves. So for years, viewers have been asking me to recommend different aftermarket blade guards that can make their saws safer. And there's not a lot of options out there, but today I'm going to show you one that I've been playing with on my saw for a little while now. But before I do, I think I need to save some of you a trip to the comment section to pound angrily on the keyboard, because what I'm about to show you is really cool, but it's not cheap, nor is it practical for every table saw. However, this video isn't just about this blade guard. It's about good ideas. Ideas which a clever woodworker like yourself may be able to incorporate into a homemade version, which is sized to the saw that you own and the budget you have, if a commercial version isn't right for you. So watch this video carefully with an open mind because you're gonna see some really clever stuff. So here it is. This is the Shark S12S Universal Overhead Guard, and it is loaded with features that really make a difference in the shop. Let me go through just some of my favorites. First, I like how it fully covers the blade. I do have an overhead floating blade guard on my saw stop, which I like, but it has to be manually set above the saw based on the thickness of the material. But the Shark Guard physically rests right on top of the saw until a workpiece is advanced beneath it, and that workpiece then lifts it up to the proper height, exposing just enough to make the cut, but not enough to put your hands in danger. Now, I could force my hand beneath this blade guard if I tried, but it's a little difficult, so it's not something you're gonna do by accident when you're not paying attention. Now, I have equipped this one with a large clear dome on the left side. You can swap this out for a flat clear one, like on this side, so that it's narrower. But the larger dome gives me a better view of the blade. Not that I really need that view when I'm making the cut, because I don't steer my cuts through the blade. You run them along the fence. But to line cuts, it's good to be able to see the blade. And if I don't want to look through that plastic, I like how I can just grab the handle, move it up, and now I can get right under there, right up to the blade to align a mark on my workpiece with the blade. There's a gas strut on the side that makes it easy to bring it up and to put it back down without having to adjust any knobs or any buttons, need any tools to do it. That is one of my favorite features. Now because this guard floats above or sits right on top of the saw, it can be left in place for many of the non-through cuts that you would have to remove a standard blade guard for, such as tenons or lap joints or things like that. But if I do want to get this thing out of the way, the whole arm simply swivels to the side and my saw top is clear. Now when you have something that is this easy to remove and then replace right back on the saw, no need to adjust knobs, no need to get out tools, you're gonna use it more often, you're not gonna leave it off for cuts when it really should be on, and that is very important if you want to keep yourself protected. Of course, it is fully adjustable both in length and in height, but it is a really heavy cast iron and steel construction, and that weight can create some challenges. For example, the cast iron base on this column attaches to a support leg that fastens to the rear rail of your saw. This leg supports all of this weight and leverage, but with this in place, it becomes a little awkward to work with my router table that is mounted in the side table of my table saw. I could spin this all the way around backwards, and that gets it partially 
out of the way. But it still can be a little awkward, especially if I'm working with a large panel or really long work pieces. I'm not saying that's a deal breaker by any means, but it is something that's taken a little getting used to. Now, if you don't have a router table on the end of your saw like this, then the way this column is designed can become really versatile in how you mount it. Because I've seen people that have eliminated that leg and post back there, and they've put the base, the cast iron base of the column right on their outfeed table, or even on a nearby bench. And it doesn't even have to be lined up with the saw blade. You could mount that over there in any direction because it is fully adjustable, not just in length, but also the blade guard itself pivots and turns to align with the blade no matter where that column is. That can really be useful if you have a small shop that requires a unique setup. Now fully extended, that post can be about 60 inches or so away from your saw blade. But again, its weight makes it a little difficult to adjust this length. So once you get it set up, don't be thinking that you're gonna be telescoping this pole in and out all the time, shortening and extending it. It's just not that practical to do. Of course, one of the best features of the S12 is its overhead dust collection. There is a four inch hose attachment right here on the back that reduces down to, I believe this is a three inch pipe. I just moved this saw to a new part of the shop because we're rebuilding some things for filming, so I don't have dust collection hooked up. That's why I'm not doing any cuts. It is a huge improvement over just having dust collection at the base of the saw, but it is not perfect. You're still going to get some dust on the top of your saw, and over the course of a project and many cuts, that will build up to dust that you're gonna to have to sweep or vacuum up later. This video from Harvey's website compares it a little bit so you can see the difference that you should expect. This is a big upgrade for a large cabinet saw like mine. And in fact, I would even mount this on a medium-sized contractor saw. And regardless of the brand, it can be mounted to pretty much any saw. The, the way it mounts is very versatile. But this is too large for a job site or a little bench top saw, unless you have that in your garage built into a great big stationary workbench. However, you may use some of these ideas to make something similar of your own. I did that many years ago. I used a piece of PVC pipe instead of the steel tubing. I supported that with a two by four because the PVC pipe just wasn't as, as stiff as the steel. To move it out of the way, instead of having a mechanism to rotate it at the uh, post like that, I had a hinge there so that it would hinge upwards. And I used a cable that I attached to the guard and a pulley in the ceiling so I could raise it up when I wanted it out of the way and then lower it down and attach the cable so it hung and that supported the weight of the whole thing over my blade. And of course you can make something out of wooden plexiglass to serve as a blade guard. But if you're going to do something like that, be sure to install an aftermarket splitter or riving knife, even if that means making a table saw throat insert with a little splitter built in, I have a video on how to do that as well. Because if you get rid of the blade guard that came with your saw, usually that means you're getting rid of the integrated splitter and you need something behind that blade to keep wood from pinching against it and causing a kickback. So, Get a hold of some odds and ends and give it a try, or I will leave a link below so you can check this one out. Now you want to see something else interesting? It's just a couple of cuts. Your ears will be fine, right? They will be if you have your Isotunes Bluetooth earbuds in, because you'd already have your ANSI certified hearing protection on because you're listening to your favorite music and podcasts, and you're supporting a small family business at the same time. Please use the link below this video to learn more and to show them you support what we do as well.